Tonight ain't too cold, but it's it's rainy and um, kind of muggy. And I want to bring you a little lesson tonight. I'm gonna preach tonight on the family we don't want in our church. Uh, the family we don't want in our church. You say, Brother Danny, I thought you wanted everybody to come here. No, there's one family that I wish would leave, and I'm praying that you will either die or leave soon. And uh, <laughs> who is it? Has anybody tell me? Brother Derek started to get up and walk out right then. I did not look at you. That's your conscience bothering you. It's <laughs> hemorrhoid. Uh, <laughs> All right. I am praying that you will die or leave soon. Now, I, it takes something really bad. I love everybody and I can get along with everybody. But I, it, you really have to be bad for me not to be able to get along with you because I can, I can about get along with anybody. But I'm really hoping that you'll quit coming to this church uh, if you're this family. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, but if his family's here tonight, this is for you. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, uh, the Bible tells these people here, verse 6, it said, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not actually among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought. We wasn't just a freeloader, you know. But wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man. Now here's what I'm talking about. Have no company with him that he may be ashamed. In other words, boy, there's people that we just don't want to hang out with. The family that we don't want. Now every preacher, old mountain country preacher like me, has their own version of this message that I'm going to bring you tonight. And uh, Mays Jackson and all them fellows used to call it the Tater family. So I'm going to preach about the Tater family tonight. Their last name is Tater. And this is the family that really I hope and pray. I don't, I don't know if this family comes to our church, but I hope they don't. Because most churches got them. Most, they got relatives spread out everywhere over this part of the country. And most churches that I've ever been in has relatives of this family going to their church. The Tater family. Amen. Uh, I'm going to talk about it this evening. And, you know, most churches in this part of the country is most of them run by a family. And that's what's wrong with a lot of them. Every little old road you go up in these mountains, there's this Baptist church. And then right down the road, you know, there's Hope Baptist Church. And about a half mile down the road, there's New Hope Baptist Church. And then about a half mile down the road, there's No Hope Baptist Church. And they just keep splitting and splitting and splitting. I know some that split and then the split split. And then the split turned into splinters. There ain't nothing left but sawdust. I mean, they just keep getting littler and littler and littler. And just about ever, everywhere you go in these foothills, in these mountains, somebody said, now there's old so-and-so. Now the Johnson family runs that church up there. You ever heard that? Or, or, or the so-and-so family runs that church up there, you know, or the Manises, you know, uh, you know, or the, or, you know, or, or the somebody like that, you know, uh, or the Rabs, you know, or the, or, or the Hollands, or, you know, or the somebody like, yeah, they run that church. And, and I don't want this church to ever be like that. I, it ain't right. I, that's why I never would have a deacon or anybody like that's kin to me or anything like that because it's just not good. You don't want that's a little old family run church up the road. Brother Derek, he's been in some of them. He can tell you a little bit about it. And buddy, I'm telling you, nothing can't happen. No, they won't let nothing happen. The, the church can't progress. They won't let the preacher. I know a church not far from. Well, it is pretty far from here. But I know a church right now where they set the preacher down and the deacons told him this. They said, now look, we called you to come in here and preach. We didn't call you to come in here and, and, uh, and make decisions. You preach in the pulpit, we'll make the decisions, and they don't even want the preacher to come to the business meetings. 
Ain't that something? That beats anything I've ever heard of. Uh, and they said, Preacher, you're not welcome. You stand up there and be a good little boy and tickle our ears and preach a little bit. But you're crazy if you think you're going to have any influence on how this church operates. Now, brother, that thing is backwards. That's the tail wagging the dog. That's the kids telling mom and daddy what to do. That thing is gone crazy. That's perverted as homosexuality. I'm telling you tonight, brother, uh, God, not, His plan is not that. It's not right. Uh, for deacons or one family or some old daddy rabbit to run the church. You know what most churches are? They got one old guy that's in there. He's been in there for 299 years. And boy, he gave the land the building was built on. And he's seen all the preachers come and go. And he's been there since the last 15 has been there. And nothing don't happen unless old grandpa is in favor of it. You know what I mean? And God can't bless and the preacher can't do what he feels led to do. And I don't want it to be that way here at Shining Light Baptist Church. Amen. So I'm going to talk about the Taylor family tonight. And I'm going to start out with one of the members of that family, old Speck. Uh, old Uncle Speck's in that family. Speck. Tater. Amen. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what old Speck does. Old Speck, he just sits back and watches everything. He don't participate. He don't never visit. He won't sing in the choir. He wouldn't give a dime in the offering plate. He just kind of sits and spectates. He looks around and he observes and he can find out what's wrong with everybody. You know anybody like that? Boy, they can tell you everything that's wrong with everything. He can tell you every mistake the preacher's ever made. He can tell you Ever, ever the Sunday school teacher didn't quote a verse right. All oh, them bus workers now they need to do this and they need to do that with them bus kids and they don't need to be doing that. He wouldn't hit a lick at a snake. I mean he wouldn't get a job in a pie factory tasting pies for change flavors three times a day. I'm telling you he ain't fit to shoot but he sure is a good onlooker. He's a spectator. A spectator is one who watches without taking an active part. He just looks on. Amen. I'm going to tell you tonight brother we don't need a church to spectators. We need to participate. We need to get involved. Everybody in the church needs to get involved. If you don't go on a bus route, you ought to give money to help them that do. If you don't uh, <laughs> give money, you ought to sing in the choir and get your hand full of tracks and be a witness. We don't want a church. Old spectators sitting in here are just running the show. Brother, we want a church of participator. You know what's wrong with a lot of churches tonight? They're like this. They're like, uh, they're like uh, man running a race. We're running a race, right? And, uh, if I was running the race tonight, I'd be running, you know, and I'm running out here, and I'm running, trying to do something for God. I'm just running the race, and I got on new shoes, and they're slick as glass. Uh, but I, I was just running like this, you know, and I look up, and there's all them fans. All them fans at the race, they're running up there, they're looking on me, and they're all up there saying, Go, Danny, go! Can't you do a little better than that? Come on, boy. They're sitting up there with sunglasses on, smoking a cigar. Uh, you're reading the paper. Come on, Danny. I don't like what you see him. He tripped over that rock. Uh, good night. That's the best you can do, boy. You know what I want to do? I want to just stop and say, hey, buddy, why don't you get down here and run a little bit yourself? Hey, man, why don't you knock on some doors? Why don't you give a little bit? Why don't you put some time in prayer? Why don't you come down here on Saturday night and spend a little time in prayer? Don't be a spectator. Be a participant. Peter, in God's work, say amen right there. Say amen right there. You're doing just what I'm preaching against. Amen. When I say, say amen, say amen. I said, say amen. Spectator, old Uncle Speck, I'm telling you what, brother, uh, you're, you're like that guy, you won't give any money. You're like that guy said, uh, turn down just a little bit, brother. Like that guy said, uh, he had ten cows. And he traded off the ten cows, and one of them said this. One of them said this, said, now, buddy, you better remember now that one of them cows belongs to God. You give your tithe, you got ten cows, one of them cows belongs to God. And next day, one of his uh, servants come in, and one of the guys out there worked on the farm, he said, boy, I tell you what, man, one of your cows, <laughs> something got sick and died. And he come in and said, the Lord's cow died. Yeah, that one, that one that died was the Lord's, wasn't it? Yeah, but you lost the Lord's dime this week somewhere. Some of you did. God gave you a dollar and some of you lost the Lord's dime. I said, God gave you a dollar and some of you lost the Lord's dime this week. 
If you didn't put it in the offering plate, you say, well, I, lost, I couldn't afford it. So you stole the Lord's money. I'm telling you what, brother, you are a spectator. You are a spectator. If God's good enough to die on the cross for us, if Jesus is going to come back and take us to heaven, the least we can do is put our money in the plate and be faithful to church and be a singer, be a, be a, be a prayer, be a amener, be something. You, I've heard people, I say, sing the choir, and they say, I can't sing. Don't tell me that, please. Do you honestly think everybody up here can sing? Whatever gave you that idea, I have no idea in this world. We're not up here because we can sing. We're up here because the Lord said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, ye land. Brother, if we set them all down and couldn't sing, we wouldn't have a three or four up here. I tell you what, man. Listen, get out and do something for God. Get out and do something for God. Some of you say, Well, I'd like to get in the bus. No, you wouldn't. If you'd like to, you would. I heard people say, Well, I wish I... No, you don't wish you could. If you did, you would. Would. I'm telling you what, brother, we need to get off, get off our blessed assurance and our seats have do nothing and get up, brother, and do something for God. Say amen now. That's right, brother. I tell you what, on Sunday morning, I, this man's up here preaching this morning. Sometimes y'all are just stone cold on Sunday morning. Sometimes you just sit there, and I know you're listening. You don't mean nothing by it, but you can't drag an amen out of you. And what you're going to have to learn how to do is say amen to the truth, not just when it feels you good and it moves you. I know preachers, they want everybody to amen them when they're up here, and they don't amen when they're sitting down there and another man's up here. I've seen them come to a camp meeting and just sit there and look at their Bible the whole time somebody else is preaching and then get up and preach and say, Bless God, why don't y'all say amen? I'm saying, you're just reaping what you sow, buddy. You don't back another man up. They don't back you up. We ought to be a participator. Participate in worship. Participate in the singing. It would shock you sometimes to stand in front of a church and we're all up here saying, Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. And you'd, you'd be shocked that the people sitting back are not even opening their mouth. Not even opening their mouth. Because some of you got here so late tonight, you missed the singing completely. And I'm telling you, I don't see why why you want to do that. That's why I bet you if we were serving steaks, you wouldn't be here late. I'm telling you tonight, brother, we need some participators. Don't be Uncle Speck, brother, throw out the lifeline. Don't let the Lord's cow die. Let that be one of your cows that died. And give him what's his anyway. And then there's old Uncle Dick. Dictator. He wants to boss everybody around. He commands without authority. He's diatrophies that Paul said, loveth to have the preeminence among us. Have you ever met this crowd in church? They want to boss everybody else around. Whatever they say goes. I mean, bless the Lord, if they think of it, it's God's will. If it ain't their idea, it ain't God's will. I'll tell you what I think, preacher. And I'll tell you what I believe. I'm telling you what, brother. You need a leader, but you are not a, a, you need a dictator. I'm not a dictator. I'm, I'm supposed to be an example by the help of God. If I tell you to pray, I ought to pray. If I fuss at you about witness, I, I know a preacher told me not long ago. He said, bless God, I ain't got time getting a bus ministry. I told them if they wanted to have it, they could do it. And I said, that bus ministry will die dead in four o'clock. If the preacher ain't willing to set the example and do it, do at first, the people sure ain't going to. They ain't going to nobody. A church never rises above its leadership. Never will get no higher than... I've heard people say, well, I know this old dead church, and I know it's dead, but I know the preacher's dead and the people's dead, but we're going to stay in there and get a revival started. No, you ain't neither. No, you ain't. It'll cool you off before it's over with. A church cannot rise any higher than its leadership. A country can't rise any higher than its leadership. A nation can't rise any higher than its leadership. Everything falls or stands upon leadership. That's why it's important. If I ever die, don't y'all get somebody in here that just can preach a good sermon. Any jack leg can come in here and do that. You better find somebody that can lead. That can lead. And being a leader is not something you're taught. It's born. God puts it in. It's a power and anointing from God. You better remember that. But he's not a dictator. I know preachers who stand up and just give everybody orders and they wouldn't touch it with one of their fingers. And we don't need dictator around here. Jack Wood said the best tell I ever heard. He said, my job ain't a dictator. My job's to keep you from being a dictator. Buddy, you couldn't say it no better than that. That's some of the deepest theology I've ever heard in my life. I mean, nobody in a commentary couldn't write. My job's not to be a dictator. My job is to make sure you ain't one. 
And I ain't going to let you be one. I've had people come up to me and say, Brother Danny, did you know? I, I'll never forget. I'm going to talk a little personal here just a little bit. Y'all don't tell nobody I said this. Uh, the first time that I had Dr. Ruckman come to New Manor was in 1982, I believe. That's 23 years ago. And I'd listen to Dr. Ruckman for years on tape and everything. And I'd tell you what, I love to hear that man teach the Bible, you know, and everything. And I said, I'm going to have him up here teach. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's right on everything. I don't agree with everything he said. He's a man just like anybody else. But God's given him a, a, some knowledge of the Bible that he's so far ahead of the rest of them fellows. It ain't even funny. It ain't even funny. It ain't even a contest. And if you don't know that, you just ain't done your homework. And half of what them other guys get is stewed down stuff from him that they're able to swallow. All that stuff William Grady wrote in Final Authority, preaching all these big men, that's just stewed down Ruckman stuff so people can swallow it and made it a little easier to swallow. Well, anyway, and that girl, Gail, what's her name? And all them people. But anyway, uh, uh, Ripplinger. And did you know what? I had church members flip their lids. They, I had one of our main men in our church set me down. He said, did you know if you have that man in this church, you're going to cause trouble? He said, did you know? And what they were doing is trying to intimidate me. And I went down to the garage, and I was a very young man at that time, and I was scared. Church was big, people was coming, and I got scared. And I, I, another man set me down. He said, Danny... You know what's going to happen if he comes. And they were saying like a bunch of people's going to leave. A bunch of people's going to quit the church. A bunch of people's going to do this. Bunch of people. And I prayed about it and I said, God, I don't want to cause trouble in the church. And that's where a lot of preachers make a mistake. They say, if I do this, it's going to cause trouble in my church. And I thought, well, wait a minute. I prayed about this. And I felt like that's what the Lord wants me to do. But if I do, a bunch of people's going to get mad. And, they're, and I'm going to tell you something. The day's coming when I'm going to make some kind of decision. It might be financial. It might be buying land. That some of you are going to say, I just don't think it's a good idea. And right then we're going to find out what kind of church we really are. Amen? That's when that's going to separate the men from the boys. That's going to separate. Can you go along with something that ain't your personal choice? But if you, are you big enough? Are you mature enough to hang in there when everything don't go your way? That's going to find out what kind of Christian you are. I some people, they love a church as long as everything goes their way. So first time a preacher does something they don't like, so then they're out the door. And they go to another in about six months and it happens, and they go to another in about six months and it happens. If you've got a good church where they love the Lord and preach the Bible and got buzz and winning soul, you better just swallow some things you don't like, man. Hang in there and stick with it. I'll give you some good advice. Because it's hard to find one. Well, anyway, I prayed about it. And honest to goodness, I thought about calling him and canceling that revival. I thought, well, it ain't right for me. And I heard other preachers saying, if it's going to cause trouble in your church, you shouldn't do it. I thought, well, that sounds right. Well, I thought, but what about the Lord? What about me and the Lord? Am I supposed to do what they say or what I feel like He wants me to? And I called Dr. John Rawlins from Cincinnati, Ohio. Because I knew he preached up there every year. I don't know what made me do that. I got his number. I'd never met John Rawlins. He used to come on the Landmark Hour on Sunday night on Waggy. Remember years ago? And he had old scratchy voice with Dr. Rawlins. You remember how he talked like he's, like he's hoarse all the time? And uh, I said, Dr. Rawlins, I'm a young preacher. I said, I'm thinking, uh, you know Dr. Rawlins? He said, yeah. He said, he said, what can I help you with? I said, well, I got Dr. Ruckman scheduled for a meeting. Some of my church members are taking a fit. What do you think I ought to do? Give me some advice. He said, did God lay Ruckman on your heart? I said, yeah. He said, well, have him. Tell them to go where it's hot. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly. Now, the other preacher said, now, Danny, don't cause trouble in your church. I said, bless God, somebody. I'm glad somebody. I needed to hear that. Now, I went ahead and had that. I did not tell him to go where it's hot. I took half of his, his advice. Nobody's perfect. Uh, but that old man, rough boy. I mean, he's rough. I mean, he hung around with Beach and Vic and run back to J. Frank Norris, right on back to the roots of independent Baptist churches in America. That old man did. I mean, them fellas carried guns, and I mean, they cussed the choir and everything. Old J. Frank Norris, he was great. And I'm not justifying this, but he'd go by the choir on Sunday morning and say, Sing, blanket, sing! And God moved all over the place. 
I mean, they was rough. They're just old cowboys. That's the way they talked. They, they didn't mean, they didn't mean, I mean, God, you know why God blessed them? Because their heart had a heart for God and sinners. And old Dr. Rollins told him, I come back to church and we did it. And we had a great time. And at that time, our choir was singing pretty good, but not great. And the Parker family come to visit in that meeting. Most of y'all know the Parker family that come saying you've been here lots of time. The power of God was on them, you know, and everything. We didn't even have a regular piano player at that time. My Aunt Shirley played when she could. Had a couple other girls play. We couldn't keep a regular piano player. And God used that meeting through some circumstances. And the Parker family wound up coming to that church. And as soon as they come, the choir caught fire. And for you that were there, you might not have realized at the time, but I look back now and I say, right then when the fire caught on the choir, and right then, and I thought, that old junkyard dog from Pensacola, Dr. Upton, he's got a junkyard dog ministry. He's a burr under the saddle ministry. I mean, he's just a thorn in the flesh of preachers. And I thought, God used that meeting to set that thing. And from that time to this, I ain't never let church members tell me uh, who I can let preach and who I could Listen. I let a man preach one time and everybody went, I can't believe you're letting him get up there. Y'all, some of y'all know who I'm talking about. He had been through an unfortunate situation in his marriage. And everybody. everybody said, ain't no way. And brother, that man cried and told me, he said, if you hadn't let me preach, I probably wouldn't be in the ministry. No more. I'd have probably gave up. But I'm telling you tonight, we're not having Uncle Dick around here, brother. You're not going to run this church. You're not going to tell us. We're going to try to do what God wants us to do. Say Amen. So if you've got it in your head, you're going to be a dictator here. Well, I'm hoping you'll die or move around go somewhere else to church. Amen. You say, well, you just say that because you want to. I ain't no dictator. I just ain't going to let you be one. And it'll be a snow in you know where, brother, when you tell me what's going to go on behind this pulpit. You might as well say amen right there. One more time, say amen. Amen. Somebody said, well, well, I don't like your attitude. You don't like it because you want to run it. That's your problem. Old Dick, you can leave, son. Amen. Amen. Old Dick, he ain't welcome here. Dictator. And then there's an old wife of his. Oh, Aggie. You know her. You know her, don't you? Lord, she's meaner than a striped rattlesnake. Oh, she comes in. She don't wear no makeup. Her hair's up here in a big old ball. Oh, she ain't sinned in 349 years. Oh, they ain't never. She knows everything about everybody. Edgy Tate has caused more hell in churches than any other member in there. And brother, she's not welcome here. Say amen right there. One woman out of place in a church can stir up more trouble than 15 liquor stores in the community ever thought about saying amen right there. Hallelujah, brother. Oh, Aggie, you can die for all we care. That's right, brother. I heard some old people getting away. Go up and say, say, well, now this young preacher here, this young preacher come, and we've always did it this way, and we've always did it that way. And no, I'm Mike McDaniel's pastor in a little church well beyond the mountains one time. And there's a bunch of them got mad at him because he didn't dismiss in prayer. One service, you know how sometimes preachers say, all right, you're at liberty to go? They said, I can't believe that. He didn't call on somebody to dismiss us in prayer. One church got mad at him. Remember when he was over there on the mountains? Y'all remember when Mike pastored over there on the mountains? I went over there and preached the revival for him. And I got up and I said, some people vote for the devil. He is a Democrat. And about everybody in there is staunch Democrats. And I thought that didn't go over too good. And buddy, I'll tell you what, some of them, where I'm going to Alabama this week. Where I'm going to Alabama, the preacher told me, he said, now, he said, everybody down here is, is Democrats, preacher. I thought, well, I don't, I don't care. That's between them and God. But I, listen, brother, I, I don't, nothing personal. You may be one here tonight, but I don't see how a man can believe the Bible and be right with God and believe what most Democrats believe. Uh, you're looking at it politically and I'm looking at it scripturally. You say, we put a Democrat in and put money in our pocket. Yeah, they'll pervert the Word of God, too. What's more important to you? Killing babies or an extra dollar in your pocket? 
None of this is in the message. I'm just throwing this in for free. Amen. Oh, Aggie, boy, she'll get in there and she'll start running her mouth. And boy, I'll tell you, here's what Aggie does. Agitate. She'll sit over there on the dinner table and she'll say, You know, I really like our church. But there's some things that I disagree with. It's just like a, the snake going, Poison, getting ready to come out of her mouth. Now, you can do what you want to, but I, and I won't let my kids hang around with people who sit around and talk negative about their church. I know we ain't perfect. We don't need your big mouth to tell us about it. Well, what Jack Howell said one time, he said, there was, he knocked on a woman's door, and she said, oh, you're Jack Howell. I've heard a lot about you. He said, oh, you have? She said, yes, and it's bad, too. He said, listen, lady. If you'll let me in, I'll tell you some worse stuff. <laughs> she said, really? He said, oh, yeah, it's really bad. She let him in. He led her to the Lord. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. Listen, man. Hey, you listen to me? I know we got faults. We don't need your big mouth blabbing all over town. You remember that old song, you know? Uh, the Lord knows I'm sinning and sinning ain't right. Uh, you know, I remember that old story? And you don't need your big mouth informing the town. Remember that? I forgot what the name that was. I, listen, I, Mary, to me, that's why I always said Marion was Harper Valley. And, and like a little old Peyton place. Morgan, little old towns like this, where everybody just yuck, 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 yuck. Wasn't somebody down here run their mouth on me and didn't want me on the radio here in Morganton. And running the guy runs the radio station. Hey, he said, boy, some of my supporters don't want you on our station, Brother Danny. I said, well, you got a guy on there on Saturday evening preaching to people they got to get baptized to go to heaven. What do they think about that? I said, if you can find something wrong with my duck or my life, tell me. And if you can't, kick them heretics off the radio. Amen. They didn't have no problem. They couldn't find nothing wrong with my doctrine or my life. They're just afraid some other preacher's going to hear it and some other member's going to hear it and they might lose a few church members. I'm telling you, brother, people like that can cause more trouble in the house of God than ever devil and Morgan, ever beer joint, ever strip tease joint. Thank God we don't need Aggie around here. Hope she dies. Agitate means to stir up as to din increase dissatisfaction. Let me tell you who agitate is. I had this happen at New Manor one time. It's a person who does this. I have had this happen. Fellowship pipe. Well, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad y'all come over tonight. You know, the preacher's talking about buying this land right over here. So and so, you know, uh, you know, I love him to death and everything. But really, I don't. There's, there's a lot of people don't think that's a good idea. You know, did you know that we're thinking about doing this over here? A lot of people don't agree with that. Did you know what we're thinking about doing it? A lot of people don't agree with that. And they spread that all over the church. And then they come to me. This same person did come to me. And I said, well, that's the way I feel like the Lord had us to go. And this one person told me, they said, you know that's not the feeling of the church, don't you? Quote. They said, you know that's not the feeling of the church. I said, no, I didn't know it ain't the feeling of the church. It's the feeling of the 30 you poisoned. See, they'll get to a little group. You better watch it when little groups start getting off to their self here and there. You watch out when a little group starts meeting over here and someone, I don't know, you know, I don't know. I don't know. A little group over here, a little group over here. Our church, we're still on our honeymoon. I mean, it's just five years old. Boy, shout, these are the good old days. I know, I know I wish we had a big bill and all that, but these are the good old days before we all start fighting all the time. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Listen, you hear me tonight? We don't need that. We don't need that. It'll kill a church. Well, I love Brother Danny, but, you know, that's why I've, I've rebuked a couple of people in here. Because you women, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. I ain't got nobody in mind when I say this. So if you think I'm talking about you, that's the devil talking to you because I ain't. I rebuke my girls. I rebuke two or three more in here. Some of you young girls and I rebuke. Listen, you don't have to say everything that pops in your little head. And, and some of y'all ladies, some of you ladies and bad, are bad for this. Some of you girls are bad for it. I've heard you do it. Somebody will come up and, somebody, and they'll say, what about so-and-so? And they'll say, oh, they don't like me. Now, there's no reason for you to say that. All you're doing is trying is poisoning everybody else's mind about that person. If they don't like it, shut up. Be nice to them, pray about it. 
And I don't mean to be mean when I rebuke you. I don't. I'm, I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm just trying to keep peace. And I, we don't want to get divided up in little groups. These people like this one, and 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 these people like this one. When, when, so, when so and some people mention a preacher, I don't say, Oh, they talk bad about me. Why do that? Unless I'm trying to get them to think bad of that person. Don't just agitate it. Don't agitate it. Man, y'all look so painful. You're looking like, Brother Danny, I can't believe you said that. You hurt my feelings. No, I'm trying to help you, man. I'm just trying to help you and be a blessing to you. It was about... It hurts my feelings. And a lot of times I've done the same thing. I've, I've caught myself saying the same thing. And I think, Lord, I, didn't, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have been that, had that kind of attitude. And ask my girls back there. Ask them. I will not let them talk bad about nobody. I mean, we cut up, you know. We, we make fun of everybody. But it's all in good fun. Really. I mean, if you can't take a joke, you know, I mean, it's really bad. But it's but when it comes really right down, ask them. I say, you shut up, shut up. It's God's man. Shut up. Well, Daddy, I know you just shut up till you're doing everything you need to be doing. You ain't got no business running your mouth about nobody else. And they can find just much wrong with you as you can them. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. Somebody can find just much wrong with you as you can. If you get in a fault finding contest, it's on, brother. It's on. Bring it on. I can find much wrong with you as you can me. You say, well, you're this. Well, you won't go on bus route. You won't win a soul. Say, I can find just as much wrong with you as you can me. It's easy. Aggie. I heard about church up there in the mountains. I've told you before. You know what they done? Preacher, this church was stuck in tradition. And this church, every Sunday morning, right before the preacher would preach... After Sunday school, everybody on this side would get up and move over here. And everybody over here would get up and move over there. Every Sunday. During the choir, when the choir come down, they'd swap sides. They'd done that for six months. One day he said, why do y'all do that? That's odd. And the church member said, Lord, I don't know. I've been coming here all my life. That's the way we've always done it. And the preacher said, I've never seen a church do that. And they said, why? Is there some kind of... Is there some scripture or something? <laughs> that's what, what's the deal here? They said, no, we've always... He went back to the old people. And they said, Lord, preacher, I've been coming here 60, 70 years. I don't know why we do that. And he found the oldest member of the church. And you know what they said? They said, a yeah, hundred years ago, this was just a little one-room church. And it was cold as ice. And they said, we had a great big old pot-bellied stove with wood in it and burn it over here. And he said, them people sat here in Sunday school like that. They'd sit over here and get warm. And then for Sunday school, so they'd swap the other crack set over here and get one. Them idiots sitting there in a nice, cool, air-conditioned building with a heat pump in it, switching sides every Sunday don't even know why they're doing it. And if a preacher tried to stop it, they'd say, He's ruining our church! <laughs> My goodness, man! Listen, brother, we don't need that. We don't need that. It's a tater family. Well, there's another old uncle, Erie, and uh, he's mean as a snake. Irritate. He just irritates you. You ever met him? Lord, I, I used to dread to see some of them coming. I remember I used to pull up in my parking place. I had a reserve parking place in, in Marion. And there would be some of them standing there waiting. I thought, oh, Lord, here it comes. And I mean, Brother Danny! Blah, 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 blah. And I say, no, please, please. i got to go in here and preach. At least wait till I get done preaching. At least until you, before you jump down my throat about something. Just so irritate. And then there's old Hezzy. He's 900 years old while he's over off. And he says, I used to like our Sunday school. But I used to feel the Spirit in our church. But I used to think they hung the moon. I'm afraid. I'm worried. Things ain't like they used to be. You ever heard anybody talk like that? I've heard people say, I'm about through, said, I just can't, I just don't think it's, I just don't feel like it's like it used to be. You know, the way it used to be when we was all on fire for God. You know, Listen, did you know there's people sitting in here right now that are having their good old days right now? 
To them, this is the greatest. To them, they're on fire for God, loving church. And ten years later, they'll look back and remember the 2003s and the 2004s and 2005 when God really moved. See, the devil play tricks with your mind. It's like I was telling you about that tape I was preached on. And I, 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 had, I had somebody tell me, they said, Boy, Danny, you just don't preach hard as you used to. And that got to bother me. I thought, well, maybe that's right. Maybe they're right. God, have I compromised? And I think, do I still believe everything I've always believed? Am I, do I still believe the King James Bible word for it? And I tried to think of something that I'd changed my belief on. And I put a tape in. I was running radio tapes, and I put this tape in. And it, I mean, I was a preaching up a storm. About 15 minutes in, I, I do my work around my, I clean up my room and iron and clothes and stuff like that while my radio tapes is running. I have to keep, you have to babysit them things. You can't run off and, and, and stuff. And man, I was a preacher. And I thought, boy, good, even if I did it. I said, preach it, brother. Even I started getting a blessing. And I, I hardly ever get a blessing out of my own preaching. I mean, you know, you know how you hate to hear yourself on a tape. I just, I just don't like to hear it. But I thought, man, I was getting, I was throwing down there. Come on, brother. Let her rip. And the devil said, that's because that was back in the old days when you had the power of God. I said, yeah, I guess that's right, devil. I wish I had the power of God like that now. And I pulled the tape out and it was like 2003. I thought it was something I preached 15 years ago. And see how he'll trick you, he'll mess with your mind. Let me tell you something, people. God's just as good and just as real tonight as he ever has been. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. We just let junk cloud up our mind. And listen, brother, we can shout the roof off this building tonight. We are still saved. We are still going to walk on gold streets. We're still going to see Jesus in all his glory. God's still true. The Bible's still right. Heaven's still sweet. Hell's still hot. People still getting saved. Just don't let this old tater family cheat you out of what God wants you to have. They ain't welcome here. They ain't welcome. We, we let stuff we hear about each other. If you're, not, if you're not careful, if you listen to all the gossip, you won't have no confidence in the singers. Well, I heard this about some of the shining light girls, and I just don't see how they can get up. Just chill, would you? Put a no dumping sign over your ears so you can get a blessing when they get up here. If there's something wrong between one of them and the Lord, God's well able to straighten them out. If you're not careful, you ain't going to have no confidence in nobody. I don't see why Brother Daniel lets him sing. He da, 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 da. Listen, I'll let them sing the same reason God lets me preach. The same reason God lets you live. Well, Fred Potter would get up in church sometime and he'd say, How many of you believe God will kill you for sinning? Everybody in there raise their hand. I do, bless God. He'll say, Why are you still living then? <laughs> Amen, brother. That old man's got some wisdom there. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You better hope God don't judge you like you judge other people. You better make, be glad God don't make you live up to what you expect other people to live up to. My girls back there, son, they got high standards for each other. And me. I can almost sin. And they'll say, Daddy. If they would preach to their self like they preach to each other, they'd be dangerous, I'm telling you. Amen? And that's the way most of us are. We can, boy, we can point out somebody else just like that. We see other people's sins through a magnifying glass and our own through a telescope, you know, a thousand miles away. Well, let's don't be the tater family. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stand and sing a little bit. Come on. Jonathan and uh, Miss Desi, and let's just sing a little bit.